First we're going to look at the Brood War Carrier, and I believe both carriers have 8 range and 12 leash range. Okay, so what that means is in order to attack something in the first place, you have to get within 8 range. So this carrier is going to fly toward the target I gave it until it gets to 8 range, then it's going to deploy its interceptors, and then it's just going to sit there and attack uh, the target. Now, while it's doing it, I can use the leash range, which means I select the carrier and give it a move command back here. And this is within its leash range. And that means it'll keep attacking, the interceptors will keep attacking the target uh, until the target dies or I leave the leash range or I give it a new target. So I can leave the leash range. I think that might be far enough. Yep. And the interceptor comes back. So that's basically how the uh, carrier range works. What I want to show you is switching targets. So let's say I use the leash range, right? And then I want to switch target. The carrier moves toward the new target until it gets 8 range away from it. And then it starts uh, attacking it, right? And in Brood War, that's not necessary. You can actually switch targets without getting to 8 range. You can switch targets within leash range. So I'm going to move up here, which is back. Um, so I'm more than 8 range away from this pylon. But I'm going to go like that. So what I did is I gave an attack command on a new target and then Immediately after that, I gave a move command to the carrier that was within its leash range of the new target. And so when I gave the attack command, it started moving toward it, and it was going to move toward it until it got to 8 range, and then it was just going to sit there. But immediately after I gave that command, I gave it a move command within leash range, and it moved to the, leash, the spot that I told it to, and it's happily attacking the target because it's still within leash range. And so I'm pretty far back here. This is farther than 8 range. And I give it a, a, a new target. And then I give it a move command within leash range and it switches. And so that's unique to Brood War. We're going to look at StarCraft 2 in a second. You can't do that in StarCraft 2. Um, and so that's really important. That's effectively um, giving the carrier 12 range. Uh, but you can't exactly be 12 range because that's that's so risky. You don't want all your interceptors flying back for a second. You're going to lose DPS. But you, a good player will keep their carriers about 10 to 11 range. And every time that a target dies, like say a Goliath died, and you needed to attack a new Goliath, you don't want to just give an attack move command because the carriers are just going to fly over there 8 range. So you want to target a Goliath, and this is difficult because in Brood War, you can select interceptors, you can target interceptors, and in StarCraft 2 you can't do that. So when you have a lot of interceptors flying around and you try to target a single Goliath, you might accidentally hit your own interceptor and that messes you up. So in the first place you have a tricky bit of micro just targeting the enemy Goliath that you want to hit. And then right after that you do that, you have to swing your cursor across the other side of the screen and give a move command that's within leash range and the Goliath is moving so he's changing the leash range you don't you don't have complete control over the leash range yourself but you're trying to dance within this uh, hopefully over 8 range or else you're not getting anything out of it under 12 range or else you're losing DPS and so that's that's difficult and you know the carrier burst is pretty high so you're having to do this pretty often you're killing Goliaths pretty quickly if you have a good group of carriers um, so yeah, that's some tricky micro. The other bit of micro that's in Brood War that isn't in StarCraft 2 is this. Alright, so interceptors employ, or deploy one at a time, and then I hit S to stop them attacking, and then I keep them moving. And now look, when I do a drag box, all, you can see all the interceptors are still out. They haven't returned to the carrier. Right, so let's pretend this nexus is an enemy nexus. I was attacking my own gateway to get all my interceptors out. I come to the enemy nexus, bam, 
instant deployment. 32 interceptors out there right away. Give a stop command, keep my guys moving, and uh, the interceptors stay out. And you can actually deploy them leash range. Right now, these carriers, because the interceptors are out, are leash range. I can attack something from 12 range. That was beyond 8 range right there. And I think the the cool thing is is that if I attack something from outside of leash range, like I attack this pylon, pretty sure they're going to move to 8. Yeah, <laughs> they just moved to 8. See, I had I had the interceptors out there. The interceptors were out. But because I told them to, the carriers to attack something when I was outside of leash range, the carriers were dumb. They moved to 8 range. They let the interceptors all return. So they got to 8 range, and then they had to deploy the interceptors one at a time. But if I had all the interceptors out, just underneath the carriers hovering there, unable to return because I keep the carriers moving, and then I go to 11 range, and then I tell them to attack the pylon, then from 11 range, I have 32 interceptors pop out instantly. That's the carrier micro of Brood War that made carriers powerful. And it wasn't easy to do. It took a lot of micro. It took a lot of accurate clicks. Um, and so let's just contrast this with StarCraft 2. And this will be easier. We have the Flyer Helper to show us. But uh, we tell it to attack. So far, this is the same as Brood War. Uh, first difference is we can't select interceptors, we can't attack interceptors. The interceptors are not a detriment to our micro in any way. Um, so no accidents there, that makes it easier. Um, now we can use the leash range, and they're going to keep attacking it. And this is what I did in Brood War, is I, gave, I told it to attack the next pylon up, and then I moved it back within leash range. And one interceptor actually returned to the carrier. So instead of all four of the interceptors attacking the new target, three of them continued to attack my first target. One of them came back and did nothing, even though I was within leash range the whole time. So I'll show this again. Put them out. Go back leash range. They won't switch. They won't switch. If I just let it do its thing, then yeah, it'll move to 8 range, it'll uh, stop, and then it'll switch. And so that's weak as hell. I mean, that's it's a big nerf to the carrier uh, between the games. And there's just no micro to be had with the carriers in, in uh, StarCraft 2. Because you, they're... <laughs> Basically, anything that has a lot of health, I, I admit the carrier has great burst damage in StarCraft 2. It's awesome at burst damage. Um, but the thing is, is uh, the leash range doesn't matter when you're bursting things down. Those are two mechanics that have no synergy because you go with innate range to attack, say, a Broodlord. Let's say I have like four carriers. I get four carriers within eight range of a Broodlord. Hope they don't get fungled or whatever. And uh, and they all go out, they burst the Broodlord down, and I want to use my leash range there. I get my interceptors out, and I want to move back to 11 range or so while the interceptors are doing the work on the Broodlord. And uh, the thing is, as soon as the Broodlord dies, it's going to die soon after that, and I have to move back to 8 range. Broodlord, you didn't have to do that. Um, so yeah, that's the big difference. I would like to see the this research just removed from the game and have the old mechanic back where as long as the carrier was moving the interceptors couldn't return and that means that you have an instant deployment uh and the other thing is if if you do have the interceptors return they heal so in brutor there is a tension in that decision if you're if your interceptors were taking some damage you might want them to come back uh, so that they can heal up inside the carrier. But the next time that you deploy them, it's going to be slow. Uh, so there's just, I mean, I've gone over like three or four different uh, complexities of micro 
that existed in Brood War that don't exist in StarCraft II. And I would hope to see some of them back because that micro was exciting. The fans appreciated it. And uh, maybe they didn't understand all the mechanics behind it, but they could watch a per game and see bad carrier micro and they could see good carrier micro. They could see carriers that, uh, you know, they were like untouchable, but they were killing everything. And um, they could appreciate that. And it, I think the carrier kind of sucks in StarCraft 2. And these these changes would obviously be buffs to it. And so it would simultaneously be balancing the carrier for StarCraft 2 and also making it more exciting so that the fans would love to watch it, the players would love to get them. So as long as we're messing around with Heart of the Swarm beta and bring the carrier back, I'd love to see all of these changes implemented. Let's just get straight up the Brood War carrier back into StarCraft 2. Uh, back for the first time, actually, because it's never been in StarCraft 2. And uh, let us mess with it in, in Heart of the Swarm beta. And it's going to be strong, and you may have to nerf it. But I hope you don't nerf it by changing these mechanics, because these mechanics are awesome.